Hello, everyone, and welcome to Asian Viewpoints. I'm Mary Sitt. Our guest today creates poetry through dance. He's a choreographer. David Sun is the founder and artistic director of Sundance X, which explores original uh, choreography that's classically based. He studied with the late Richard Thomas and Barbara Fallis of the New York City Ballet, and he's performed as a dancer with the Houston Grand Opera. David, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. So how did you get into choreography in the first place? Um, what started that? Well, from the very beginning, I was always interested in choreography. I'm always in whatever the field I'm looking at, I'm always interested in the process. And, uh, but I knew immediately that I didn't know enough. I hadn't seen enough repertoire. I hadn't danced enough stuff. Uh, I didn't really know much about the business. I just knew that I liked the process of, of making things. So you were a dancer first, a ballet dancer first, before you became a choreographer. And how did you get into ballet dance? Because um, that's sort of unusual, A, for a guy to get into dance, and B, um, you really didn't grow up with the dance culture, did you? No, it was it was uh, an interesting process. Um, well, to, <clears throat> to be perfectly blunt, this very cute girl invited me to dance class. <laughs> 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 and I always had kind of a crush on her. So I said, sure, what's a dance class? And went with her. <laughs> uh, she asked me because she used to see me at clubs uh, after I worked in, in, in restaurants and stuff. We used to go clubbing and I would be dancing around wildly on the dance floor. God only knows what I look like. But <laughs> she finally said, you like to dance. Why don't you come to dance class? So I, I was introduced to it. They stuck me behind a 10 year old girl and said, follow her. And I thought I'd pass out. Couldn't figure out why such a tiny little girl could you know, do so much. But your teacher saw some talent in you, even though you started older than what you normally, if you're going to clubs, you weren't like five years old kid dancing, learning how to dance. You started older than usual, right? What well, What did your teacher say that she saw in you? First of all, she saw a guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, you know, male men in dance world, in the dance world, especially in ballet, are few and far between. Uh, one of the first questions she asked is, can you pick me up? Because if I could carry her on my shoulder or lift her off the floor, boom, you know, that's mm -hmm. what I ended up doing. <laughs> uh, because at the time, basically, I was just working and going to the beach and surfing. Okay. So I was in pretty good shape. But what attracted you to dance? What made it something that you wanted to do and, and later on became your passion? Um, it was the movement with the music and the theatricality mm -hmm. of the whole process. So when you um, choreograph a dance, are you attracted to the music first? Does that inspire you? Or do you see dance movements and you go, oh, I want to create a dance for that dancer's movements and the way she performs that particular movement? I'd say that 98.5% of the time it's the music. Mm -hmm. And I have to really love the music because uh, it's it's I'm going to be listening to it forever. It's like a marriage. <laughs> if, you, if you don't like if you don't know what you're getting into, I mean, there's nothing worse. I've been assigned things for kids when I choreograph. Hated the music. And, right. you know, what do you do then? So that's, that's you know, very, very important. So you, the music inspires you first. And then you love right. that music. And you think, what what kind of dance can I create that goes with this music? Is that how it right. works? Right, right, right. But music is is absolutely the most important thing. So when you um, create a dance, do you draw little stick figures out in squares like with the notations above it? I was, I was doing some no, research no. and I saw actually an image like this. How do you do it? I don't do that. In the beginning, I was very, very pedantic and would take get the score, look at mm -hmm. what the music did and say, all right, I have to do this to match the music. It was god awful. <laughs> and it was so cerebral, it just didn't work. But I made myself crazy doing this. I mean, I have copies. I just discovered <laughs> whole score with my notes written all over it. It was a disaster. Uh, I drove my dancers crazy, too, because, you know, it was just too much. Uh, and I had to learn one of the process, things that I learned in this whole process is to be uh, listen to my intuition. Okay. So... You know, if you, I know, I know the music backwards and forwards, but I'm not going to pre-plan. 
I'm going to do this to that. To, you know, I don't want to Mickey Mouse the music. That's the worst kind of choreography. No, but how do you write those movements down so that the same you don't. choreography? I, mean, you, I can write down notes and things, but I have to it, the combination of notes and 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 video. I video all my rehearsals. Uh, keeps a record of it. The process is always they watch, I do. Okay. Um, and that's the way, you know, dance has been passed down over the years. Now, it's, you know, would ideally you have a, 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 once the dance has been set, you have somebody who can come in and set the dance, not necessarily a choreographer, on a group of dancers. Okay. Uh, and they have their own notes. Everybody has their own process. There is a notation system. There are a couple of them. One is Labot and the other one is Banesh. Uh, which are widely used, but it's difficult to learn. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, I don't do that. I've learned, I've studied lab on it. It's very intricate. Um, but I have my own note taking, but I rely a lot on on video and, and my own memory. Tell me about one of your favorite dances you created. I'm using the Bach Cello Suite 4, and I did it on a solo dancer. Ideally, I'd like to have more dancers, but I took uh, two or three movements from the Cello Suite and uh, she did a wonderful job. She happens to be one of my students, uh, which doesn't hurt, but she's very talented. Beautiful, beautiful dancer. <laughs> enjoy most about choreography the process mm -hmm. um i you know i said to my last my, my last piece of choreography that i felt like i could finally it was like sculpting i could tell the dancer what i wanted and, and kind of mold her manipulate her mm -hmm. uh to doing the movement that i wanted to do and uh that was the most that was very fulfilling. That was very fun. Well, David, thank you so much for being with us. If you're ready to sign up your little four-year-old daughter or granddaughter to ballet class, you might want to wait. David's son will be back with us next week, and they'll tell us the optimal time to start your kid in ballet class. Too soon could be a bad thing. So if you enjoyed this video, please click like below and subscribe to the channel. I'll be posting new videos every Thursday. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.